what's going on, guys. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Um, no one in, I, I shouldn't say no one. Most people in your position, you play this professionally, you make a living this way, but you love playing. How much was it, how, how much did it mean to you to get back on the field yesterday? Oh, it meant the world. Uh, you know, sitting now, so we, you realize how much of a privilege it is to play the game. So, um, and that's what I, that's what I keep saying in the media. And that's what I told my guys. And it's true, man. Uh, I was just having fun out there and, um, it was just really great to, to just get back on the field and, and have a blast with my teammates. I know you don't like to make excuses, but obviously you had mono week one. You just don't all of a sudden discover mono a couple of days after you played a football game. So can you even put a number on like how you felt Sunday compared to how the fe you felt the last time you started a game? Um, I definitely felt better. Uh, you know, I definitely felt better uh, last night than I did the first week. Um, but I was definitely able to play, obviously, the first week and definitely could have played better. Um, but I was feeling 100%. Uh, and it, it was amazing to just get out there and um, put the put the work, you know, the work that we did in practice during the week uh, to be able to make that work in, in the game. I think that was the huge side that we made this week was really taking practice and applying it to the game. I think that's something that we didn't really do the last the last few weeks, and I think we really did a good job of that this week. I mean, for me looking, it didn't seem as if there was any rust at all, which I was a little surprised you haven't played in a while. Did you feel rusty at all? And if you didn't, were you surprised that there wasn't any? I felt good. Um, you know, I... There, were, there was a little rust, uh, just just in terms of you know some of the throws that I made. Uh, you know, I felt like my feet were a little slow in some aspects, but uh, and also making some of the reads. You know, on the interception, I felt like that was a super easy read that I should have been able to make, and um, just got confused on on one of the looks there. Um, but that was about it. You know, other than that, I felt like I had a great game and. Um, really felt like our team, our offense was playing with a great tempo. Obviously, defense came up with a huge stop there at the end and knew they would. Uh, it was just, again, like I said, it was a huge team win, and um, the guys came in really excited to work uh, this Monday, and, you know, we're looking forward to next Monday night. When you're up um, in a game like that, 21-9, um, and you're playing a team like Dallas, are you almost expecting that it, it could come down – it could be very close at the end. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Dallas is a really good team, really good defense, obviously. Um, but we feel like as an offense that we left points on the field. Um, there were multiple drives where we felt like we could have scored touchdowns, uh, where we didn't. And we felt like the game, you know, the game was the game was a little too close there at the end, obviously. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think the way that we won the game, um, even though it, it was a little scary at the end for some of the fans, I think it was the perfect way to win for our team because last year, um, you know, especially against Buffalo in the first week, those are, those are the games that we lost in the past where teams convert this two-point conversion and then come back and beat us in, in overtime. And so for us to get that stop on the two-point conversion and win that game, taking a knee uh, at the end in the fourth quarter, that's how you want to win games, and that's how you're going to win games in this league, and it was it was good to, to have that feeling on Sunday. Walk me through the 92-yard touchdown pass to Anderson. How did you see it? Uh, how did you guys conceive of that? Did you know earlier in the game that that was open for you? I mean, it was just, it was really a, you know, Coach Gase came to me uh, right when we got the stop on fourth down. He was like, because I think there was some type of timeout, and we had time to talk about it. Um, and uh, he was just like, hey, you want to take a shot here? Uh, and, of course, I'm just like, do whatever you want. You're the play caller, you know. So, uh, you know, he wanted to take a shot. And um, I knew that if the safety got low enough, if he's got low enough, the free safety, I was just going to be able to put it out there for Robbie and no one was catching him. I know you're giving credit to the coach, but just your philosophy and going back to high school, like after a turnover, tuner, uh, a turnover, or like what happened there with turnover on downs, that feeling like let's go for the jugular right away, was that kind of how you felt going in there that that could be the momentum change? Defense comes up with a big play, now it's your turn to have an immediate big play after that. 100%. Um, that's 100% the mindset, but I think those, those kind of turning point opportunities can come at any point, not just after a great fourth down stop by our defense. 
Um, but I think where my game is going to continue to grow and where I'm going to continue to grow in my career is we can take those shots, but sometimes they're not going to be there. Um, and most of the time, really, in the NFL, they're not going to be there. So I got to learn to when to check the ball down. Um, and I thought, you know, obviously I made a good decision in throwing it to Robbie. Um, and I said this again after the game. I think he's one of the best, if not the best, at tracking the ball in the NFL once the ball's in the air. Um, so he, I just put it wherever because I knew the free safety wasn't going to be involved in the play. Um, I could leave it a little inside for him. And, he, of course, he ran under it, made a great play on the ball. Now, your, your offensive line struggled with the previous quarterbacks. And just two times you got sacked yesterday. And then some of the guys came out and said, well, we had a quarterback that knew what he was doing. I mean, I don't think they they meant to take a shot at the previous quarterback, but how does that make you feel that they, they, if they feel so strongly about you? Yeah, um, I don't think, you know, I don't think that's fair um, really to Trevor or to Luke. Um, you know, I just, I think for me, getting all the reps in training camp and, and leading up, you know, obviously in the preseason um, and really even, you know, the week leading up to Philly, um, I just thought it was it was a little hard on Luke, right. uh, to be honest, for the Philly game. But you know, I was definitely really comfortable for me going out there, and um, you know, I felt like almost I was at home just uh, going out there, getting in the huddle, and then going up tempo if we wanted to, uh, slowing it down if we wanted to. We really felt like we were in, we were in control, and the defense was really on on their heels. And again, I, I, I said it before the season even started that's how we want to play offense we want to be on the attack at all times and that's how we were last night um and again you know i really i really do believe we, we left points out there and you know that's a, that's a good thing uh to some extent but at the same time we got to learn to finish some of the drives that we that we start michael asked coach earlier about how the team rallies around you how, how they, they support you and that shows true leadership and Coach said that that you may not seem like that the rah rah guy, but they really seem to respond to you. He said you had swag. Yeah, and, but but you, that quiet swag. But is it quiet because <laughs> you're so young, or is that just your mentality? Is that the way you'll always be, where you'll be more of that quiet leader than a guy that's going to you know jump on a chair and, and and lead the charge out of the locker room? Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess we'll find out in the future. <laughs> uh, but uh, right now, I'm just I'm just kind of. I'm still I'm still so young, and this is my first year in the offense that I got enough on my plate to worry about that. You know, I'm not worried about pumping the guys up. I'm worried about doing my job and making sure the offense is going out there and then scoring touchdowns and converting converting third downs and you know making sure that we stay on the field, give that defense a break. So, um, you know, that's that's really all I'm worried about. Um, I'll let you know most of those defensive guys handle the raw raw stuff. They're pretty good at it. <laughs> But for the most part, man, I'm just I'm worried about going out there and doing my job. Now, um, in, in terms of keeping outside noise to a minimum, you guys have to hear some of it. A lot of the Jet fans have given up on the team with the 0-4 start. They just assumed it was going to go to 0-6, and then you win yesterday. Can you guys make something special happen this season, or the early losses kind of submarine your hopes? No, we can definitely make something happen. Uh, we believe it. Um, but it, it truly is taking it one week at a time. Um, I know it sounds cliche, but it's it's how you got to do it in the NFL. It's uh, it's a crazy league, and you can't take you can't take one team for granted. So uh, that's kind of our that's our mentality going into every single week. And I, I believe if we continue to do that, we got a good enough team to win a ton of games. Uh, and so that's that's just going to be our mindset going forward. Ty Montgomery's a, a dangerous weapon. Do you think that we could see more from Ty as the season goes on? Yeah, Ty's, Ty's a, he's a great back to have. He's a great running back slash rec receiver slash, you know, anything he kind of wants to be. So um, he's a great weapon to have on offense. And, you know, with a, with a mind like Adam Gase out there calling plays, um, you never really know what he's going to do next. So, um even even for us as an offense, we kind of go out there and practice and wonder where he's going to line up. So, um, you know, it's pretty fun as a quarterback to have a guy like that on your team. So I'm sure we'll see him in, in a ton of different looks this week and maybe in the future. But, um, you know, right now, I know, that, I know that Ty's excited to just get out there and play ball when he gets the opportunity. 
You mentioned one game at a time. This is the perfect team for that, right? It's the New England Patriots. So well, from one test to the next, playing on Monday Night Football. So team you've already played, but your early impressions for the game coming up a week from today. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. I mean, division division rival, Monday Night Football. You know, it doesn't really get much bigger than that. Now, the guy across the building already has a nickname, Danny Dimes. I'm thinking Sling and Sammy. What do you think? I like it. <laughs> no. I love I like it. it. I'm telling you, yeah. just don't take the nickname. It hasn't aged well. The no, it was it was Sanchez. Oh, oh, it was it. Fitzmagic. Okay, I'll stop. Get, how about He's Broadway Sam Joe? Darnold. How about Broadway Joe? How'd that work? Out? It didn't work out great. His career was stunted. Was he only had the Michael. one Super Bowl. He had to sell his soul to the devil to get it. Oh my no, goodness! No, Sam, I'm telling you, just be Sam Darnold, man. Don't be pressured by these people. Sling and Sammy. Nicknames are for people that I are don't. weak. <laughs> Whatever, whatever you want my nickname to be. Uh, that'll, that'll be up to you. That's the answer. To to the All right, one final thing. So, good Sunday. How how upset were you, ND beating USC? Uh, pretty upset. I mean, we had a chance to win. Uh, I think Keaton Slovis is a really, really good player. Uh, and, you know, as a true freshman to go out there in that atmosphere, um, I've played there. Uh, didn't have the best outing. It's hard to play for sure over there, and he did a really good job for two freshmen. So um, I'm excited for his future. Um, but, yeah, it was a bummer. Um, obviously, Notre Dame's a really, really good team this year, and, you know, we've had our fair share of injuries and things going on over there. So um, I was proud of the guys for fighting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I think I think Keaton's got a, got a good future, and I think the team has a good future. It's just about... You know, click on all cylinders. I don't know if you realize this, Sam, but there might be a bigger USC fan in this area, and that's the manager of the Yankees, Aaron Boone. I mean, his day is made <laughs> or broken on whether USC wins or not. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's us, man. So that's you got to root for the Yankees now since, you know, a USC guy's running them. That's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. Since the Dodgers and the Mets are out of the playoffs, I guess I got to root for the, for the other New York team, huh? All right, so he chose the Mets, I guess. Yeah, I don't like that, Sling and Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations we'll on the see. win. We'll talk to you uh, next right. uh, next Tuesday. All right, sounds good. Guys. All right, thanks, thanks a lot.